modern, functional, practical, and sentimental. Around the beginning of the 20th century, the Postal Savings Bank from Austria was rapidly expanding. They needed big enough space to fit all their business operations and the increasing number of employees. Hello everybody, welcome back to Jenny Loki. I'm your host Tuyan Ertürk. Today we will talk about the first modern building of Vienna, the Postspargasse, also known as the Postal Savings Bank from Otto Wagner. Let's get into it. Otto Wagner stays as one of my favorite architects throughout the history. You may know him as a modernist architect, but that was not always the case. He studied in Vienna and Berlin. After finishing his studies, he started to practice neo-Renaissance, neo-Gothic and neoclassical styles like every other architect did at the time. Around the 1890s, he began to develop his architectural understanding into more functional, sustainable and modern thinking. What is impractical can never be beautiful is one of his quotes from that period. Not everybody appreciated his new architecture at the beginning though, um, especially the ignorance and jealousy of the conservative politicians made Wagner lose many of the competition projects that he applied for. Nevertheless, he didn't step back from his ideology. And that's why I appreciate him. He was not afraid to make change and eventually this made him the architect that we all know today. In 1903, the Postal Savings Bank created an open competition for the building and Wagner's project won out of 37 entries. In his design, he combined the holes for the savings business and the check transactions together. A solution that some of the architects in the jury tried to use as an argument for rejecting Wagner's project. Still, on the contrary, representatives of Postal Savings Bank acknowledged this design solution as a functional improvement. That shows uh, that good architecture takes both a visionary architect and a visionary investor to happen. The building was realized from 1904 to 1912 and counts as Wagner's most important work. For the savings bank to operate as soon as possible, the construction was divided into two parts. The first part of the building was finished in 1906, providing the main entrance, cash register and management rooms. The second part of the building was completed in 1912, connected through the staircases from the both sides of the building. From the inside out, everything has based on Wagner's principle of design. With the savings bank, he created the whole system from the technical part of the architecture to its symbolic meaning. Each constructive detail and interior decoration features functionality and usability as its core element. Every material decision made had to be not expensive and easy to maintain. The same ideology flows through the shapes of the building as well. Everything has clean, geometrical and functional forms. All those decisions were made only for one thing, to create a sustainable product. The building rises to eight stories, the facade is made out of brick supported by the reinforced concrete, and the interior walls are non-load bearing, which means the room layouts can be altered if needed. We are talking about feature proofing here, by the way, a feature that has become a standard in modern office buildings. And the newly introduced material, aluminium is vastly used because of the fact that this material was cheap, hygienic and didn't really need any cleaning. Even though it has distinctly different style, the building respects its environment and blends through its volume, color and rhythm of openings. The entrance welcomes us from the east side, opening itself towards Vienna's first district. The brick walls are covered with granite slabs on lower levels and attached through the iron bolts that are coated with the aluminium. Well, these bolts are very, very important because uh, they go beyond their structural function and they create a resemblance to an old traditional safekeeping, symbolizing that the building is one giant safe to keep your money in. The marble slabs on the upper levels have the same aluminium coated bolts, but this time they don't have a structural function. These slabs are kept in place by plaster the use of marble makes the maintenance and cleaning of the facade very convenient, an essential functional element in Wagner's design. The main entrance elevates the Grand Service Hall to the first level with the flight stairs. Here, the entrance hall, we see the clever positioning of aluminium slabs on the lower part of the doors to eliminate wearing and dirt on the wooden material. The Grand Service Hall is the heart of the whole building. Everything is designed around it. The skylight roof is supported by steel construction 
allowing natural light to enter the structure, giving stylistic attributes, and reducing the use of electric lighting at the same time. Even the floor is made out of glass tiles, transmitting natural light further down below where the post office boxes and mail sorting rooms are located. Here we see the aluminium again, covering the steel columns. Basically, Wagner covered every part in the public rooms with aluminium or marble that the human hand could touch to make those parts easier to clean. Further at the counter hall, we see marble again, covering only the lower part of the walls. Stairs between the east and west sides are made of concrete and coated with 3 cm thick marble. The office spaces are placed outwards of the building, using the natural light as much as possible. Some of the most important rooms are the red room, which is the vice governor's office, the green room for the executive board and the sunflower room for the administration. Every room is covered with 2.2 meter high wood to protect the walls from chair or table damage and the walls above it with the striped wallpapers in the color of the room. Color coding or generally coding in specific rooms in teams is a common practice in office buildings nowadays. Otto Wagner went beyond the traditional understanding of what an architect's uh, job consists of. He designed the entire furnishings of the Postal Savings Bank, uh, floor coverings, wall paneling, carpets, radiators, lamps, clocks, door handles, standing desk, counters, stools, seats, chairs, desk, wardrobes, wall racks and safes. Everything had to go along with this new design architecture. This includes the cost efficiency as well as durability of the chosen materials and the modes of construction. Apart from that, he used materials to define the hierarchical structures of the rooms. The best example to illustrate that is probably the armchair model 6516 where he used the same armchair design in different materials for the different rooms. In the representational room of the management, uh, the armchair was made of mahogany stained solid beach uh, with its seat upholstered in velvet. And the high sleeves of the feet uh, were executed in brass. In the level below where the general business rooms are, we see the same armchair but stained in gray or black. The fittings are aluminum instead of brass. The sleeves are also covered in aluminum for extra protection against the wear. The simplest variant is used in small offices for internal operations. This one had a seat for perforated plywood. All right now, if we sum up all the information we talk about today in one big mind map. First, Otto Wagner designed Postal Savings Bank in 1904 as a result of the competition project. With functionality, sustainability and practicality as its core elements, Postal Savings Bank count as the Austria's one of the first modern buildings. Every decision had taken to be not expensive and easy to maintain. Building blends with its environment, with its volume, colors and the rhythm of the openings. With its bolts on the facade, it resembles a giant safe. The Grand Service Hall is the highlight of the building. Anything that human touches are covered with aluminium or marble for better hygiene. Unique rooms are color-coded to make them easily recognizable. Furnitures are designed in the same language as the building. And they also reflect the hierarchical levels of functions in the building. I am always trying to do these videos as short as possible, but if you want to know more about the building, check out the links I provide in the description box below. Also, please share this video with somebody that you think might be interested. I believe sharing and expanding the knowledge is the best thing that we can do to make a better world. Thank you for staying till the end and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really gives me so much power when I see somebody new subscribed. It really makes me super duper happy. Uh, all right now, um, guys, see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.